What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for Thursday, Thirsty Thursday, May 30th, 2024. Bringing it to you. You know who I am, right? Do I need to introduce myself still? Joe Warwick. Damn glad to meet you. Um, please visit the Buckeyecast.com. You can help support the program, support everything I do on this channel. Uh, if you're listening on podcast, leave a five-star review, please, and go to the Buckeyecast.com. So we're talking uh, about the O-line today. Um, hey, please hit like and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, like 80% of our viewers are actually unsub not subscribed. Um, our podcast listeners, I have no way of knowing who's subscribed, follows the show or whatever, but... If you are following the show, hey, just leave a five star review. You don't need to write anything. Just just click five stars wherever whatever app you're using. Thank you. It helps us a lot by doing that. Hitting like, leaving us a five star review or whatever. It helps other people find this show. Other Buckeye fans like you and me. Oh, so let's talk about the offensive line. I think uh, kind of looking back. After we did a, a full assessment after the spring game, it seems to me that Ryan Day, Chip Kelly, and Justin Fry are all comfortable with the status of the offensive line, the way it stands right now. Obviously, it has to be better than last year. They got a full year of experience. Um, I assumed, we all assumed probably, that Ohio State would add another transfer portal lineman after spring ball. Didn't happen. And I'm going to talk about why in a second. So my two deep, I've got Josh Simmons at left tackle. Behind him, I got Zen Mahalski. Uh, he's a fourth-year guy as well. They're both redshirt juniors. Uh, left guard, obviously, Donovan Jackson, his final year. Then I got the second-year guy, Austin Sereveld, behind him. Center, McLaughlin. Uh, he's a fifth-year guy as well. Uh, behind him, Carson Hensman. He is a third-year guy. Uh, right guard, Luke Montgomery, Tagra Shibola, or Hinsman. That's kind of the battle that's going on right now. Uh, Luke is a, a true sophomore, so second-year guy. Tagra is a third-year guy, a redshirt sophomore. Hinsman, again, is a redshirt sophomore as well. Then at right tackle, Josh Fryer returns um, his final year, and then Tagra probably backs him up if he doesn't win that starting guard job. If Tegra does win that job, it's probably Luke backing up uh, Josh Fryer. So, again, Tegra is a third-year guy. <clears throat> so, the Buckeyes returned four starters on the O-line. Uh, they added a fifth with uh, Seth McLaughlin from Alabama. Uh, he was a two-year starter at center for the Crimson Tide. Uh, the Buckeyes uh, are set on the left side, as we expect. Uh, left tackle and right tackle, you got Josh Simmons and Josh Fryer. Uh, the Joshes, Team Josh, they started all of 2023. Uh, Donovan Jackson returns for his senior year. Then right guard, as we talked about, is wide ass open. Um, Carson Hensman battling at right guard this season, not really at center. Um, so after after the Buckeyes brought in Alabama center Seth McLaughlin in early January, we thought the Buckeyes would add another O lineman you know, from the portal or two, one or two. And then after spring practice, it was obvious Ryan Day and the staff were not happy with right guard. They rotated three different guys through there. Um, so why haven't they added another transfer offensive lineman? Um, well, number one, the options in the portal are thin. And when I say thin, very, very, very thin, slim. Yeah. Uh, on the 24-7 uh, sports transfer rankings, only five of the top 22 players are offensive linemen. Then the next offensive lineman is way down at number 73. Only seven of the top 100 players in the portal are offensive linemen. And then uh, two of those seven are true freshmen who have never played in a college football game at all. So you're not going to bring him in, plug him in as a starter. Nope. Um, the, of the others, two committed to their schools, New schools in December. One followed his head coach to his new school. Uh, the other transferred to a new school, then transferred back to his original school after just a few months. And then um, 
Uh, Lance Hurd, from formerly with LSU, uh, he never showed any interest in the Buckeyes. Um, there's there's no one available who can come in and compete for a starting job. It's just the person does not exist in the portal and didn't. So uh, the other reason is Ryan Day and his staff looked at the spring game tape and came away feeling that the starting right guard is already on the team. They're not sure who exactly it is yet, but that person is one of the three. Um, when spring practice opened, Luke Montgomery was the favorite to win that job at right guard. Um, he got plenty of reps, um, but he had his ups and downs over spring practice. Uh, some say he hit a, a bit of a wall at some point during the 15 practices. Um, but in the spring game, he took – Montgomery took zero snaps with the first team offense. That should be a big sign. Um, those reps were taken by last year's starting center, Carson Hensman, and Tegra Shabola, who we thought was a tackle. Looks like a guard, though. But anyway, uh, so the door is wide open for a starter at right guard. Somebody just needs to walk right through. That's it. The, the opening is there for Tegra, Luke, or Carson. Um, and Justin Fry, it, it's very simple how how position coaches do this. It, it's all the same. Justin Fry, you can change his name for any with any other position coach on the staff. They will grade each player in critical situations, as opposed to a controlled rep or a drill. You know, you can't really grade somebody on a drill that much. Um, then, so like third and long situations coming out of your own end zone situations, short yardage situations. They're going to be great in how they perform in those specific crucial areas. Um, and the point is to put each guy in enough of those situations so you can see how they respond and you can grade them by their response, right? So for Fry, uh, he'll, he'll grade those guys and the starter is going to be the guy at the top of that group, right? So – it, say it's, you know, Luke Montgomery. He's going to be the highest graded in those crucial situations of those three between Hinsman, Shibola, and himself. So I don't know. It, the question is, if things don't start off well, once once the games fire up, do you, if you're just a fry, do you make a switch? Do you make a change? You know, it might be better to change in week two than week six when you're going to Oregon, right? So I think if you're going to make that change, you better freaking do it by week three and stick with it, you know? Um, and then injuries are always going to come into play. Guys will miss time. Again, the, the coaches have all talked about playing depth over this 15, 16, 17 game season. So guys are going to miss games, reps, snaps, whatever. So who rotates in is a huge question. And uh, I'm, I hope that nobody misses like multiple games because that's that could be uh, just a nightmare scenario for this offensive line. If a starting left tackle goes down, right? Even starting right tackle, you know, that could be bad too. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Please visit the Buckeyecast.com. Check it out. And uh, please hit like, subscribe, and all the happy stuff. And uh, hey, you can shop right below this video, by the way. If you look down there, you can buy some of these shirts that I'm wearing. So talk to you later. Go Bucks.